In the last segment, we took you to the Crescent City of New Orleans and down into the Caribbean to explore Creole culture and how racial classification changes from culture to culture. Now, we head 1,600 miles off the coast of Africa to the largest country in South America, Brazil. In many ways, Brazil seemed to mirror Louisiana. It's a land surrounded by territories that speak a completely different language. While South America speaks Spanish, Brazil was colonized by the Portuguese. On one hand, New Orleans was the incubator of jazz music for the world. But Brazil gave the world samba. The dish red beans and rice is a staple in Louisiana, but feijoada is its equivalent in Brazil. But during the Atlantic slave trade, Brazil received more African enslaved people than any other country, with an estimated 5 million West Africans brought over from 1501 to 1866. Cassava is indigenous to Brazil and also kept well on ship voyages. It was adopted quickly as part of the diet of enslaved Africans. Black beans, also called turtle beans, are a staple food of Afro-Brazilians. Feijão is Portuguese for beans. It's believed by many that it would evolve into feijoada in Bahia, Brazil, on the backdrop of sugar plantations worked by enslaved Africans who would also cook the beans for themselves and their owners. Cassava is from the Amazon basin, and in its raw form, it's poisonous. But when cooked, it's entirely edible, and the base starch of many Latin American kitchens and the descendants of the West African enslaved, which includes 50% of Brazil, the fifth largest nation in the world. For them, cassava is called farafa, but whether farafa or cassava, it's intimately part of the epic story of Africans finding their way in the Western Hemisphere and the story of African foodways. And we're on! Chef, I am excited about using this uh, yucca. I am too. Because this is where our cassava flour comes from. And um, we're going to do some yucca fries. Yes, so we're going to break it. We're going to break it down. <laughs> All right, so first we're going to start. I may need to move this over so we got so okay, everybody gotcha. can see what's going on here. So basically we have a hole in here, and this is a pretty good size one. So you're going to start by cutting off the ends here. And it's a little tough. My knife is not sharp enough. No, it's a little tough. That's not good one. Let's see here. All right, so we're going to start here. That's the first part. And we're going to cut the other end here, just like so. And then we're going to cut it one more time here. Uh-oh. Don't get away mm -hmm. on me. <laughs> Trying to run away on me there. Trying to run away. And then we're going to cut it for one more time. This is the final time that we're cutting. We're rocking it, baby. <laughs> <laughs> and so what we're going to do is we're going to look for the flesh side. So I'm going to have my quick paring knife here. Gotcha. And all we're going to do is just go around the edges like so. Oops, I just cut myself. All right. <laughs> Let's go down. Get it out. It's a little tough, y'all. So you want to make sure your knives are good and strong. Good and sharp. I mean, it just peels off easy once you get it started. Like so. See, look how it, you hear the crackling of it? And that's that bark outer layer. Mm -hmm. And there's a, a double layer. It's a white thin layer and then your bark. Similar to what we see when we have some of the uh, darker colored sweet potatoes. Yes. And see, look at there. Once I get to the bark, I can actually peel it off. Mm -hmm. Let's try this little piece again here. This is a learning process. Mm -hmm. You're doing right, so great, once, yeah. once you get there, it's coming off. Let's see here. And then we want to look to see if there's any black pieces, and there's not. Because if there's any black pieces, you want to go ahead and disregard this, discard the whole thing. All right, so the next thing we'll be looking for is we're going to cut down the middle, and there is a little what inside? Um, there's just a little uh, tuber-like uh, core, and so you want to get that Look at there, so out. Mm -hmm. Looks almost like a little worm, almost. Right. And you want to lift that out. Yeah. So I got that first little part. 
and be real careful when using your knives. And it's just a little bitty piece that's coming out. It almost looks like a worm, so if we can kind of see what that looks like. And it's basically, I guess this is part of the part of the root. So I'm just mm -hmm. going to strip some of it off so we can see there what it looks mm -hmm. like. The next thing we'll do, we're going to actually uh, begin our cut. So we're going to go ahead and make us some good old french fries here. So I would probably do it like so. Almost like steak fries. It right? is almost like steak fries. I mm -hmm. love steak fries. And the other thing that you can also do, you can grate this up. I like to think of this basically a starch. Yes, and it can even be used in desserts. Desserts? Yes. Mm. I love home fries. I remember growing up on Friday nights, my grandmother loved fish. So every Friday night we had fish. My great uncle would come in and they would sit up and then we would eat drums. So that's that back yeah. in the day, everybody ate drum fish and perch. Perch, yes. yes. And you know, we were talking about the other day how fish fries are pretty much universal to uh, all of the cultures the West African, mm -hmm. the Caribbean, Louisiana, where your family's from, in yeah. Haiti. Mm -hmm. So it's uh, a universal thing that. Um, brings the community together it does. and it had you have a big fish fry and uh, play dominoes and cards and, Boy, and all the trash talking that goes along <laughs> with that all of it and then these are coated with some of our cassava flour that we use on the halibut yes and uh, some of the seasonings and can we air fry these also Shelly? you can also air fry these that air fryer I tell you that is one of the greatest inventions because that gets us from stop using so much of the grease and not that we don't like the grease but it's not good for us but like i say with everything everything should be in moderation right all right all right so, so get... these are ready to be seasoned and coated and yes then we're going to uh pop them in the we're going to pop them in the and we're going to air fry them and then we'll have our cassava fish and chips yes we will chef air you have done it again yeah. cassava fish and chips and they look gorgeous yes i can't wait to dig in and the thing i'm noticing they look like regular french fries mm -hmm. i wonder what they taste like well we just need to find out mm -hmm. let's grab one <laughs> <laughs> oh the seasoning on here is really good they have a crisp of a fry mm -hmm. which is awesome mm -hmm. and if you look inside look they look just like french fries on the inside. Mm -hmm. Just like my nanas. Mm -hmm. Crispy on the outside, but tender in the middle. And what about our uh, cassava coated um, fish? That looks good. I want a little lemon on mine. How about you? Okay. Sounds great. Okay, let's see here. Squeeze just a little bit here. Mm -mm -mm. Lemon goes better with everything. Mm -hmm. Okay, we have you more. It's going to take a little piece of the side here. Mm. Mm. I'm going to grab this little piece here mm -mm -mm. that has a little bit of lemon on it. Oh, it has I, a little crunch too, I, I see. Uh, you hear that crunch? Mm -hmm. Let me see. Can you taste the crunch? And the seasonings are very good, complimentary to the fish. But now I'm a fan of the cassava flour. Yes. Especially for gluten-free. So those people that are gluten-free, this is a good gluten-free item. So this is our take on cassava fish and chips. All right, Chef Sherry. So they probably want to know where can they find us? Yes, uh, you can find us at giftsfromtheancestors.com and also on our YouTube channel, Gifts from the Ancestors. What about on Instagram, Chef? On Instagram at Chef Fair, <clears throat> and that's H-E-I-R. And at Chef Sherry 1913. And we do have a Gifts from the Ancestors on Instagram also. And we just want to thank everybody for coming for our fourth episode, Yay. Cassava Fish and Chips. Please subscribe, click like. If you enjoyed this episode, give us, give us a thumbs up. There we go.